<laughs> Y'all know what it is. Let's talk about DMS. What was it like jumping on with those guys? Uh, I saw a photo on your Instagram with like the, the last gathering that you guys did in Vegas and just the level of talent that's in that picture alone is incredible. Um, you got digs, you got uh, audio one, you got all those different guys that came together in Vegas and you kick it with them all usually on an annual basis. But um, for those of you that don't know what DMS is, it's, it's for, it stands for direct music service and it's a record pool that is one of my favorite record pools. Um, I've been a member for quite a long time and that's how I know Scooter is um, because of his edits there. And uh, uh, can you talk about DMS and the crew and what it's like working for him? Yeah. So when the relationship with um, uh, Crooklyn clan kind of dissolved, um, it was basically, um, there was a lot of us that kind of uh, started there, like, and cut our teeth um, with that website. And then, um, again, there was some changes to like the money structure for the editors that almost everybody disagreed with, and a lot of us that were, you know, the higher ranking members or charters or whatever you want to call it at that time, kind of like made our voices known and. It just was something that um, d didn't like the vision long term either, the way it, where it was headed. And so I remember talking to Danny uh, Diggs at the time, and we both were like, yeah, like, you know, we should look at some other options here. And Kevin Scott has always been somebody who owns D Direct Music Service with War and Peace. Uh, Kevin um, has been best friends with like DJ Am, like yeah. for a lot, long, many years. Um, and he's just always been a guy that has been very kind of like big brother ish to me. Uh, and, and Danny too. Um, he would like, we would link up in Vegas or like the DMS get togethers, like that were going on. And he invited me to, even when I wasn't really working for the company, like, you know, um, and he just always was like a good steady person to bounce stuff off of. So when this stuff with Crooklyn was, you know, dissolving, like he was like pretty much like, man, like if, if that doesn't work out, like, you know, I got you, like, don't worry, which was cool because like that was big of him just to like be like, basically like I'll hire you like on site if, you know, you ever decide to leave that situation, um, which was cool. And that's basically what happened. It just seemed too, too easy to do that. I didn't feel pressured and like the pay structure uh, was a lot better, like, and stable on um, from them, um, and they weren't like particular about. They kind of understand that like being creative doesn't really have like the same linear thinking as like stamping license plates or like when ideas hit you, they just come. And sometimes I do ten edits a week, and other times I do one. You know, um, and they get that. So. Um, they were just cool about it, and that's how it came to be, and it's it's worked out great. I mean, Kevin and Warren are both, like, super stand-up guys, and I'm really big on vibes, and, like, I like to feel people's energy out. Like, when I meet them, and if something doesn't feel right, I'm, it kind of scares me away more often than not. Um, I just get, like, an energy being around people. Like, I'm not talking, like, I don't want to be, all like, physio physiological, like, you know, the <laughs> spirits roaming through the, the, the room. I just mean, like, if I feel like they're cool people, like, that makes me more inclined to work with someone. So, yeah, they were that. always really cool. So, yeah. that's how that came to be. And uh, it's been great. So, I uh, I saw Kevin Scott a long time ago at Trinity Nightclub in Seattle, and and it was cool to watch him throw down. He he uh, uses the turntables old school way, disco style, which is was fun yeah. to see. Um, but, yeah, I I've – huge fan of the site and i i love um you know everyone that m makes edits for him so thanks for doing that so he's like one of the cleanest mixers too like f like from a beat matching standpoint like one of the cleanest djs i've ever heard in my life yeah like, i wish i could have seen him you know and more before that and actually you know like seeing that i i i came across dj am um 
on the latter half of his life. I never got a chance to see him. And I wish I would have known about, you know, AM and Kevin Scott and all these guys 10 years earlier so I could have followed their career. But um, yeah. Yeah. Same here. I was like late to that. Yeah. Late to the train, like as far as being able to see AM live. Like he, he was originally from Philly, which is crazy. Like, you know, and I found that out like at the time, I was like, how did I not know who this dude was like when he was living here, you know? Yeah. I was like, kind of like, Again, like no internet. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, unless someone told me about it on AIM, like I didn't, I was like, what? Like, I didn't, you know what I mean? And I wasn't hanging out like in the city of Philly at the time, which basically is what you had to do back then to find that stuff out. You know, it wasn't, it had to be like word of mouth. There was no, you know, Facebook event invites and shit like that. So, 